James Held at IFL TV in association with Mac the Knife Global. We're in Vegas, big fight week. Carl Frampton mm. and Leo Santa Cruz too. With me, I'm quite fortunate enough to be joined by none other than Alex Steedman. How are you, sir? Man, I'm absolutely buzzing. That's absolutely good. buzzing. The atmosphere out there is building all the while. Can't wait. Talk to me a little bit about this fight. We're all highly excited about the rematch. I yeah. mean, Carl Frampton's got to come into this favourite in many people's opinions. But what, what do you think we're going to see in this fight? I think it probably depends on whether or not Frampton can hurt Santa Cruz again. He, he made a big impression, didn't he, in the second round last time. Mm -hmm. And I think that had a big bearing on how the rest of the fight unfolded. I think Santa Cruz was, he wasn't in his shell, but he, he wasn't quite maybe as positive and aggressive as, as he would have been. So I think that played a big part. Maybe if he doesn't hurt him first time around, if we got a closer fight, I just think Santa Cruz is made for Frampton every day of the week. A fighter who comes and throws a thousand punches over 12 rounds, that's just made for the jackal. And I think he'll just he'll pick him off. If Santa Cruz gets reckless, maybe, just maybe, he can knock him out. But I think the likelihood is slight odds against. What is he, five to four against to win on points, something like that? I think that's likely to happen again. With the volume of punches, as you mentioned, that, mm. that Santa Cruz throws, do you think he, if he does try to load up, it will make him quite vulnerable for the, for the counters that Carl, Carl does throw? Yeah, I mean, he can't, he can't fight any other way, can he? Santa Cruz, he's not going to do anything different. He's got to come forward, and that, that's, Franton loves that. He's just too clever, he's too sharp, he's, he's just got everything Franton is. I think it's his fight to, to win or lose. It depends entirely on him, not what Santa Cruz does. It depends on how Carl Frampton reacts and from everything we've seen so far in the build-up, he's absolutely buzzing, isn't he? And um, those fans, I tell you, this, I don't know whether, whether there's 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 or whatever, but they're here in number, it's going to be some atmosphere. The fact that it's Frampton's second fight at featherweight, he'll probably hold the weight a lot more better. He would have had more time sort of getting used to the weight and that extra time in and the extra bit of power that he mm. carries. Do you think that, that would be the telling tale in this fight? Yeah, I mean... He, I think he made weight quite comfortably before, didn't he, last time? And to have another, what, seven, eight months getting into that, you'd like to think he'd be even stronger, maybe even hitting harder. But it just boils down to Frampton, what he, what he does and how he reacts. And we've seen that time after time, whether it was Martinez in the, in the first fight or Santa Cruz in the, the first fight, he would just get it done. Where does Frampton rank in your pound for pound list? I mean, he won a lot of accolades last year for his performances, no doubt um, beating Scott Quigg, yeah. and then to unify the division, and then to go up to win the WBA Super title as he did. But what, where does he stand in your pound for pound ranking at the moment? Well, he's got to be. He was. I think he was mine in most people's fight of the year, British fight of the year in 2016, without a question of doubt. That was. Everyone I spoke to, whether they're boxing fans or journalists, he was their number one pick. That wasn't even in, in doubt. Um, pound for pound rankings? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good question. Top five? Hmm? I think that's fair. Currently? I think that's fair. He's beaten, he's beaten Quig, he's beaten Santa Cruz, he's gone up in weight, he's unified the division, I, I suppose. Small matter, Mr. Selby. You mentioned Selby. On the undercard. You mentioned him. It's fantastic to have him on the undercard. I'm a bit disappointed he's quite low down because yeah. you would have thought being a world champion, being the same weight, having that rivalry, they would have billed him a lot higher. But he is on the undercard. So potentially Frampton Selby, if everything goes okay for the Brits. Yeah, it's made, it's made for the summer in, in Belfast, isn't it? Outdoors. Um, well, listen, I mean, the only thing I'd say about where you bump him in, in the card is stacked, isn't it? It's a brilliant, brilliant card. I can't wait to see Mikey Garcia in action against Zlatan and that big left hook. Uh, you'd like to think he stays away from, from that for four rounds and then he gets the job done, but it's a stacked card. I can't wait to, to see it. And yeah, I mean, I think Barros is made for Selby. Whether he's quite made for him to look as spectacular as he did mm -hmm. um, against Gradovich when he won the title, I think it's a similar sort of setup. So it's quite possible that Selby wins and wins spectacularly. Um, there's everything it's set up for him to do that um, so he wins and Frampton wins and it yeah roll on the summer I'm, glad you, I'm glad you mentioned his win against Evgeny Gradovich because mm. he's looked over a little bit and at, at the time mm. Gradovich was looked at a, as a real monster in the division and no yeah. one really wanted to face him so yeah it's, that is a very prominent win for Selby yeah and he, I mean Gradovich was a bit face first wasn't he and he was made for made for Selby but I think Barros is, is the same you know he's he's got a good record he's got the punch according to that record but he's not really fought outside Argentina no? I think the way he fights is tailor-made for Selby to, to, to look good again after a, a couple of 
I think shaky enough performances for someone at his level now. So he needs to bounce back. He needs to look good, and I think he will. Boxing matters back for a new season on Box Nation. Yeah. Tell us what's going on. Are you excited? Yes, I am. Yeah, we've got um, we've got the usual roundup of uh, journals um, in doing the beat, and I've got a special next week. Uh, I don't know when this is going out, but next Monday we've got a special uh, with Colin Hart and, and Alan Hubbard. Um, so look out for that. Yeah, there's, there's some good shows coming up. What a year it's going to be, isn't it? You're, massive. You're massive, doing the round, yeah. speaking to the, speaking to all the, the the new boxers. Look at all the signings that, that everyone's making, whether it's um, whether it's Matchroom Sky, ITV. If you're a boxing fan, it has never been better. You mentioned ITV. You've now brought me into this this whole this whole conundrum that I want to talk <laughs> about. That is the Eubank pay per view. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on Eubank versus Quinlan? Well. First of all, it's a good fight for Eubank. ITV is a great platform for him. Um, is that that fight's not worth ten quid? Let's say it. That bill is getting better towards being worth ten quid. Yes, it's getting better. Yes. I think it's been a bit maligned. Um, but I think the bottom line is Ryder Etches is a great fight. Yeah, that Ryder Etches is a is a fantastic fight, isn't it? And um, it's an important one for, for both of them. David Price versus the Hammer as well, good fight. Yeah, um, my big mate Price, I'm great to see him back and getting that, that exposure. I thought he was good on telly last week when he was on ITV. And that's a good fight for him. Hammer's a, you know, is a, a name we've seen against Chisora, what, three or four years ago. Um, so it's a, it's a good enough step back into the limelight, I think, for uh, Pricey. And he'll want to get his name back in amongst the... The big guys, of course, with um, all of that that's going on next year, this year, I should say. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, listen, it's not worth 10 quid. Um, the undercard is pretty good, and I, I would probably think about paying for that. Um, but it's it's just ITV's dip the toes in the water. It's, a, it's, it's just a functional thing to prove that they can do it. So maybe, just round the corner, they can bid for the big fights, whoever it is. Are you a fan of Chris Eubank Sr. being so prominently involved in his son's career? No, no, I'm not. Um, he's done his job up to a point. I, I interviewed him uh, when they were with Box Nation. God, it must have been four years ago now. Three, four years ago. I remember it vividly. I think it was in Manchester. And I said to him, it was very early on in the, in the journey, in the adventure, and it seems like we've had so many twists and turns since then. And I said to him specifically, will you know when the time is right to exit the stage and just move off, um, and he he wasn't very comfortable with that. He didn't he didn't like that as a, as a question I, I as it happened. No, <laughs> yeah, um, and he hasn't exited the stage. Listen, he, people still buy him, fans still buy him, whether they're boxing fans with the boxing media or whether they're casual fans. People buy you, Bank Senior. So he's still playing his part in, in his boy's career. I'd, I'd like to see him take side seat or a back seat but it's not going to happen question we all want to know what house events are on this weekend <laughs> in vegas what's caught your attention where are you going to be what's going on do you know what I, last year um I, when i came when i came over with you to see um canelo against um Cotto, Cotto. i did go and see i went to hakistan uh, i went to calvin harris a bit poppy for my taste um but it's a quite a good venue. There's not loads going on, James, my boy. We're a bit, we're a bit numbed with the house, mm. unfortunately. But mm. we'll find something. I hear Omnia tonight's not bad, so we'll give that a lash, probably. Is that is that the one for tonight? So young Chris McKenna tells me. I'm not, he doesn't look like you're a house head me, to me. You're worrying me. <laughs> you don't look like a house head, does he? <laughs> the best of times. Pure worrying. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, what have you heard? Note, I don't know. I'm just, I just. I just. I've, I've probably worked and slept more than anyone else since yeah. you've been here like because the, the men of the pen you know what they're like they write a few stories they make out they're busy then they disappear but the videos they take so long to update and bloody upload like I'm constantly just busy and then after that I just I go to sleep I've got my uh, Josh Taylor on by the way Josh that. Taylor of course on the undercard yeah. yes. Celtic as yes. well for the yes. Irish so come on Josh Taylor and come on the Irish thank you very much for your time cheers Paul, pleasure soon.